Okay, we're back, and in this one I want to tackle the challenge of setting up a HUD. And making a HUD is generally quite easy, but this is going to be a little more complex. But I'm going to show you some really cool techniques to manage having multiple HUDs and stuff like that. And it's not going to be too bad. But um, you're hopefully going to get a lot more insight into how to make HUDs in this video as well. Uh, because I've shown how to make... Um, you know, a very simple HUD, but I haven't really shown anything on like more complicated HUDs, and so that's what we're going to be going over in this video. So, again, when I make projects, I like to organize them really well. I like to make really good structured projects that don't fall apart when you try to expand them, you know. This is what I'm trying to do here, um, and I'll give you guys some insight into this, you know. When you make this tutorial, you're going to realize, oh, okay, if I want to add more stuff, I can. And it's going to be very expandable. And that's really what you want to look for um, when you're making like a big project. Making your game expandable is such a big deal. <clears throat> and if it's not expandable, you know, you're going to run into quite a lot of problems. It's going to be really difficult. And, you know, if you fail to make it expandable, a lot of times you will tear out code and have to replace it all. It's very annoying. So anyways, this is HUDs. I was kind of going on a giant tangent there, so... Anyways, uh, right click, new folder, and we're going to call this Blueprints. And inside of Blueprints, we're going to add some more folders. I'll call one Extensions, but we're not going to use that yet. And I'll call another one HUDs. We'll open up HUDs, and inside here we're going right, to uh, right click, User Interface, Widget Blueprint, and we're going to call this HUD underscore in game we're going to add another one hud underscore inventory and we're going to add another one which is hud underscore shop so we have three huds here we'll save them all and now let's open up the in game hud i'm going to set up the in game hud first because that's the easiest one to set up but it will still take a full tutorial to get that all set up. So to make my HUD, what we're going to do is we'll start by just dragging some text in. Like I showed you on my project, I had Inventory System Project 1, so I'll just add that, because why not? Inventory System Project V1.0. So that's added now. Um, and then we need to add the help text. So to add the help text, we're going to go copy, paste, And I want the help text to appear about there. We're going to make sure the text is always centered. And I'm going to drag this out to be quite wide. That's so that no matter how long I make my pre-C to pick up whatever, it's always going to be displayed quite nicely. Uh, so now I'm going to anchor this. We'll anchor it down here. So now it's always going to be aligned. It's always going to be in the right place. And we don't have to worry about that. And lastly, we're going to add... The gold. You might remember it said that we had X amount of gold, so we'll say gold zero. And that's the basic HUD setup. I'm not going to set these up yet, so a help text, um, by default, we don't want that to say anything. So, and our gold counter is not working, and our HUD text uh, help text is not working either. These are not set up to say anything yet, but we're just going to get this HUD getting displayed first. So. We'll compile this, save it, and now we're ready to get into actually displaying a HUD on the screen. Like I said, I want this to be very expandable. So I'm going to be implementing this in a way that you might think is a little over the top, but remember, this is to make it expandable. We want to be able to add more HUDs in the future. We want to be able to add more shops, more types of inventory even, more different HUDs. And we need to make this expandable so we can add different types of HUDs, right? So, enough rambling, let's go back to our um, code. And we're going to open up the game mode this time. The game mode is where I like to handle all of the HUD stuff, um, which might seem counterintuitive. You might think, why not use the HUD class? But um, the game mode is very easy to get a reference to. And also, in the Unreal tutorials, the official ones, that's how they get um, their HUD going as well, so we're going to use that. So open up the game mode. 
In our gamemode.h, we're going to implement a enumeration, and I've never done these in my tutorials before, I've never made an enumeration, but I'll explain what they do in a second. I'm going to make an enumeration called ehard state, and we're going to make it of type uint8, which means unsigned integer of 8 bits in size. And then we're going to enter some HUD states. So we have um, an in game state, a uh, inventory state, and a shop state. And we'll call this shop general. And just to prove that we can add more HUDs in future, we'll just add shop weapon, although I'm not going to add a weapon shop in this series. But, you know, if I want to add that in future, it's been added to the HUD states. What these are an enumeration is just setting up your own set of values. So I know that I need a few different HUD states. There's a few different states that my HUD might be in. And so by using an enumeration, it's a great way of storing different states. Um, enums are used all the time in the Unreal Engine. Uh, for example, uh, actually, you know what, I'm not going to, oh, actually, IE pressed and IE released. These are both things that are in an enumeration. An enumeration just takes a value like IE pressed and assigns it 0, or released it, assigns it 1. So HS in game is equal to 0, HS in venery is equal to 1, HS shop general is 2, shop weapon is 3. This may seem kind of overly complicated, like why would you go to all that effort, but you'll see why this makes it a lot easier uh, later on down the track. We're also going to add um, apply HUD changes, so checks the HUD state, and then calls apply HUD, which is another method we're adding, accordingly to apply whatever HUD we want. So void check, or sorry, apply HUD changes. U and 8 get HUD state. is going to get the current state of the HUD and that's useful later on, you'll see where that comes into use. Um, so now we're going to make um, the setter function for the HUD state, so if we want to set the HUD state to something, here's how we do it. Um, so setter function for HUD state, this is the getter function by the way, getter function for HUD state, and then the setter function for the HUD state. applies the new state and then calls apply hard changes void change hard state u and 8 new state so that's the new state to apply to our hut we need to call this from blueprints as well and you'll see why later on but just trust me we do need to call this from blueprints at some point so what we're going to do is we're going to add the u function macro and we're going to let blueprints call this by giving it blueprint callable. And then we're going to say category equals hud functions. Lastly we need to add one more function applies a hud to the screen. Returns true if successful, false otherwise. B um, ball apply hard, and this takes a couple of parameters. First thing it takes is a T subclass of, so it takes a user widget. And this is the widget to apply. If you don't know what a widget is, it's basically just a HUD, a set of buttons and stuff like that. Um, for example, the inventory is a widget. The, um, the shop is a widget. They're all widgets. So this is the widget that we want to apply to the HUD or the screen. And then two booleans, B show mouse cursor. Obviously, when we open our inventory, we want the mouse cursor to be showing. Um, and then enable click events. And that is, do we want click events to be enabled? For example, um, there is buttons in our inventory that we need to click. 
do we want the events to be enabled for those of course so we have the option to either turn those on or off right next we need some protected functions this is because we're inheriting from game mode you don't really understand what's happening there it's not a big deal but anyways u int 8 hud state this is the actual hud state itself so we've written all the getter and setter stuff for that um, but this is the actual hud state and this is protected as well so you cannot directly access the hud state from outside of the class you have to access it with this little getter function which we'll make in a sec um, so the HUD to be shown in game. New property, edit defaults only. So we don't want to be changing this in the game. Only edit the defaults. Blueprint, read, write. So the blueprints can read and write to this. The category is equal to um, HUD widgets, we'll call it. And then because this is protected, we want to tell blueprints it's protected as well. So we need to say blueprint protected equals true. And now it knows, oh, okay, this is a protected blueprint variable. And this is going to be t subclass of. And then the widget. Inventory, or actually in-game, hard class. So that's the in-game one. Now we need to add the inventory and the other ones, and we can just copy and paste those to add those. So the HUD to be shown in the inventory. So that's inventory HUD class. The HUD to be shown in the shop. Shop general HUD class. And then finally, the last thing in our game mode is the widget that is currently on the screen. So that's you use a widget, current widget. Now, if you've watched my tutorial on how to make HUDs, you will know that um, we need to change the build.cs before we can start adding the HUD. So to do that, we're going to go into build.cs. I'm going to add another value to the array, UMG, which means Unreal Motion Graphics. And then you just want to copy this over. Change this one to Private Dependency Module Names. And we're just going to add Slate and Slate Core. There we go. So those are now added, public and private dependency module names. Save that, and now open up your documents. Go to your Unreal projects, and then you want to open up your inventory. Then simply right click on the project and go generate Visual Studio project files. And when you go back into the Visual Studio, it's going to ask if you want to reload and hit reload all. Now those references to Slate Core and UMG and all that stuff, that's now working. Let's close the build and we'll go back and actually set this all up. And this is going to be a bit of a mission to get this all set up, but um, it will be worth it. This is going to be great for our heart. It's going to be, it just makes it a lot easier. So, uh, also, last thing is we need to override the begin play, which we can do right here. Let's do that there. The virtual void begin play override. So now our game mode has a begin play function. So let's implement that by creating a definition. All right. Inside of begin play, all we're going to do is apply the HUD changes. So we'll say, as soon as the player enters the game, apply HUD to the screen. 
We'll also set the default HUD state up. So HUD state equals E HUD state HS in game. So set the default HUD state to be the in game state. So when we first spawn in, we're going to be set with the in game HUD state, right? Let's um, let's apply 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 HUD changes here. So we'll we'll apply that. Go into CPP here, and right. Um, in our header here, we're gonna include blueprint slash user widget dot h, and that will allow us to access some really important HUD functions which we need. Remove the previous HUD since we're applying a new one. So because we're removing the, oh, sorry, we're applying a new HUD, we want to remove the previous one, otherwise the HUDs will start to stack on top of each other and it will look really bad. So say if current widget is not equal to null pointer, then current widget remove from parent. So remove it as long as it's actually there and it's not equal to null pointer. The next thing we're doing is using a switch statement. Now if you don't know what a switch statement is, it's essentially a way of just using a bunch of if statements. You're checking a variable and in a bunch of different cases you apply different things. It might sound complicated but once you see it it's actually quite easy. It's basically the equivalent of using a bunch of if else statements. So we're going to say in the case that the HUD state is equal to the in-game HUD state. We want to apply a new HUD to the screen and we want to apply it using the in-game HUD class and we don't want to show the cursor or enable click events because there's nothing to click on and we're in the game we don't want the cursor to be shown obviously. Put that inside of the brackets there and then we just hit break and this will break out of the switch statement. Let's add another one. We'll say in the case that the HUD state is equal to HUD state HS inventory, then we want to apply HUD and we want to employ the inventory HUD, so we'll say inventory HUD class true true because the inventory is going to have buttons, so we want to have those enabled. And in the inventory, we also want to show the cursor, so we give it true for that as well. Then we break. We'll add a case for the shop inventory. E HUD state. HS shop general. Fly HUD, uh, and then we say shop general HUD class, and true and true because we want to show the mouse cursor when we're in the shop, and we also want to enable click events when we're in the shop. So we'll have that there, and then we'll add a default class as well. We should never hit the default one, but by default, we'll just apply the in game HUD. So in the case that it's not equal to shop general, inventory, or in game, We'll apply this in-game one anyway. But we should never hit that point anyway, so. But we'll just add the default state anyway, so close that. Let's um, make the rest of our functions. So get HUD state, for example. Very easy, that just returns HUD state. That was easy. Change HUD state. Change hard state's a little bit more complicated than your average setter method. Not by much though. So we set the method, so we say HUD state equals new state. So we've set the method, but now we want to call that class to see what um, HUD we need to apply. So we'll just say apply HUD changes. So we've changed the state of the HUD, we've changed the state from perhaps inventory to in-game or something. And now we need to call apply HUD changes um, to apply those changes, right? So 
Um, right. The next thing is apply HUD. That's the final one, and that just applies the HUD to the screen. And that one isn't too hard to do. It's, it's not awfully hard anyway. So what we need to do to apply the HUD to the screen is we need to get a reference to two things. The character and the player controller. So let's get a reference to both of those. Get a reference to the player and the controller. Inventory system character. Oh, sorry, inventory character. That's my other project. A inventory character. My character. We'll cast whatever that is into a inventory character. And we'll use U gameplay statics. Get player character. This zero. And then we'll also say um, a player controller. Get first player controller. I'll just call that my controller, why not? So later comment here, null check whatever widget. We're trying to apply. So this function takes a widget, widget to apply. But we need to make sure widget to apply is not equal to null before we just blindly try to throw it onto our screen. Because if it is null, then we're going to get a crash. So to check against that, we're just going to say if widget to apply is not equal to null pointer, and then we know, oh, okay, it's not equal to null, we can now work with it. Set mouse and... Um, Set mouse visibility and click events according to params. So we say my controller v show mouse cursor equals v show mouse cursor. Um, my controller enable click events equals enable click events. So those have been set up and then we'll create the widget. So we say current widget, which is the widget currently on the screen, equals create widget. And then get world and widget to apply. So that's the widget that we're trying to apply. Let's now check the current widget to make sure that it applied properly. If it is not equal to null pointer, say so current widget, add to viewport. So add it to the screen, right? And then we can return true because the function worked. We successfully put the widget on the screen. However, if that failed, then we'll say else return false. And then here, after widget is equal to null pointer, if the widget is a null pointer, then we'll just say else return false. So in the case that the function works, it's going to return true, and it's going to return false if it didn't work. Pretty simple. And that's pretty much it for the game mode. In fact, that's everything, I believe. That's all implemented, it's all worked out, and we've put it all in, I believe. Okay, so let's show the, wit on the, uh, the, the widget on the screen. This is the last thing I'm going to do before I go to the next tutorial because my brain is fried from all the coding. So, uh, <laughs> anyways, let's come in here. Right click on the game mode and go create blueprint class based on inventory game mode. This is how we're going to extend it. We're going to click on blueprints, create class. And we need to compile my code. So I'm actually going to come back after the code is finished compiling. All right, we're back. Very quickly, just two mistakes in the code. If you go back to your inventory, um, go to inventory.h, or whatever your project is called, .h, and then change it from engine uh, to, sorry, engine minimal to engine. You absolutely need that, otherwise you will get a bunch of errors with the hard stuff.
Also, inside of the character, um, inside of check for interactables, get forward vector is a function, so you need those little brackets there, and that's it. Those are the only errors that I had, so I fixed those up, and now it compiles just fine. If we go into blueprints here, um, that little game mode that I made and double click on it after compiling, so compile and then open it back up, and we're going to get the in game HUD class, inventory, and shop general HUD classes. So add those, those are those HUDs that we made, and compile that and save it. Now go to Edit, Project Settings, Maps and Modes, go to the um, selected, oh sorry, the default game mode, and change that to My Inventory Game Mode, that is the blueprint version that we made. Close that, and now if we hit play, we finally, for the first time in our project, have a HUD that's working. So that's the HUD. Uh, I know it's been long and tedious, but that's the groundwork for the HUD. And the rest of the HUD stuff's actually going to be quite fun. We're going to be building the HUD, uh, mapping all the buttons up to work and stuff like that. It's going to be quite fun. But doing the groundwork for the HUD, I'm not going to lie, pretty boring. But anyways, that's out of the way, so I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.